Okay, so this is the control table for um, all of the buttons for players one, two, three, and four. You will notice that the main defaults for uh, five, six, seven, and eight um, are not on here. That's because the GPIO pins are using them for those uh, insert coin buttons. So I just wanted to, I already did my settings, um, but just pay attention to this table. And then this is the um, Ultimark Win IPAC configuration for the board. So there's, uh, let's see, what is that? That's one right, one left, uh, one up, one down. Uh, let's see, and then we start getting to the buttons and it goes pretty standard all the way to um, player two. Player two is actually where it starts to uh, differ from what the MAME defaults are. And that's because the MAME defaults uh, start to rely on joysticks. Uh, shifted key, uh, you'll see the IPAC shift. And then uh, there's shifted keys that you've uh, noticed. So you can set others to that as well. So this is when you hold uh, player one start that would count as the shift key and then you can have other keys that uh, like for example if you went to uh, two start and you set shifted to anything else then that would be where you see um, that shift key tick effect as of right now I don't have anything set on that uh, but that is not to preclude it from happening at a further date. I might uh, come back to this. Uh, right now, what I'm spending more time on, is, on the topic of shifted keys, is where all insert coin buttons can be pushed at the same time. And then uh, via system D under Linux, that would execute uh, the halt uh, command to get to init zero for fully shutting down the board. And then uh, beyond that, it's going to be just actually killing the power and not even having to worry about um, shutdown commands. But then that involves like uh, switching into read-only mode and all these other things. So I digress. So to start is two. Uh, let's see where else. Yep, so far so good. Uh, you'll notice the coin um, is actually different. I'm using the coin buttons up top as service keys. And so that's why you see, uh, for example, nine and now zero um, right there uh, for the service keys instead. And again, that's because um, for five, six, seven, eight, and eight, those are used by the GPIO um, hardware interrupts that are the coin inserts. So then we've got, uh, let's see, where do we go? Uh, we start diverging from main source code at button five on player two. So just punching through, showing uh, everything else to y'all. Let's see, okay. And I am having to hold my phone uh, and record this because for whatever reason, VirtualBox, no matter what I do, there's some kind of update between uh, Windows and VirtualBox um, where now it crashes, everything like fully crashes if I exit or try to screen record or try to do anything. So I am stuck holding uh, my phone to record. Um, so I apologize for the lower quality. Uh, there we are. So this is where um, at five, you'll see uh, B, six, you'll see E. So this is where uh, we start to kind of run off the rails uh, from what the standard is for MAME. And then uh, let's see, one A is three, um, 1B is minus, 2A is 4, 2B is equal. So what this is for 1A, uh, for the auxiliary, these auxiliary pins, 1A, 2A, uh, 1B, and 2B, those are going to be the, um, uh, the, uh, the start and service buttons for players three and four. So the far left joystick, Leonardo, and the far right joystick, Raphael, uh, that's what um, I'm using these buttons for. So this is how we put our 48 inputs to use. 
then for player three, uh, we've got, let's see, L, we then start to run off the rails on player three just for the fourth button. So everything else is gonna be pretty standard for main. There we are. And then when we get to the fourth button is where we see the letter N. And then we run over here to player four and everything except for the start button and the service button are um, different from what the main source code is. So uh, we've got T is for uh, right, left is R, up is O, down is P. Uh, let's see, button one is U, button two is V, button three is W, and button four is Y. And then, um, let's see, so we're looking for four and equal sign, so it should be, let's see, where do we put it? Right, yep, there it is, on the auxiliary for 2A and 2B. So that's that's where the, uh, the only standard main keys are. And so this is how we have 48 inputs for four players uh, without any conflicting keys, since actually when you start reading through the main source code, uh, some of the keys conflict, and that's where um, ideally you would be using joysticks. Um, here, this will not let us set game pads, uh, I assume because we're only in keyboard mode right there. And uh, then you do have all these keys to choose from. And then macros, uh, that's something I started to kind of look into maybe from just using as shift keys, uh, where I would maybe do like um, kind of an equivalent to control delete, which would normally restart. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna try and handle that all at the system D level um, using the, uh, what does Adafruit call it, uh, retro game. Uh, so I'm gonna try and set a shift key in there on that side. So um, then just hold all four coin buttons down and then that would uh, shut the machine down. That's my goal. Uh, another option might be to look at uh, holding all four uh, start buttons down and then that uh, shutting the machine down in which case then maybe I would come back here set a macro and then um, Try to look at maybe doing like player three start and player uh, Four start being the shutdown or player one and player two start being the shutdown. So there's a couple of different things. I'm gonna try um, And then like I said the the kind of longer term goal is to stick it in uh, read-only mode, so then I can just turn off the power without worrying about damaging the memory card. So 